In the past several lectures, we explored what happened to an electric dipole that was placed into an external electric field. Now let's suppose we don't have an external electric field, and now we want to calculate what the electric field is that is produced as a result of an electric dipole. And let's only look at the points that lie on the perpendicular bisector that bisects our electric dipole as shown in the following diagram. So we're looking to find the electric field that is produced as a result of our electric dipole at point A. So point A lies on the perpendicular bisector line that bisects this distance in half. So if the distance between point charge 1 and point charge 2 is given by L, then each of these distances is given by L divided by 2. So the line that begins at this point and ends at point A is the altitude of the following triangle and it's given by the distance R. So the height of the triangle is given by R and the base is given by L divided by 2. Now let's call this angle theta and this is our 90 degree angle. That means this is simply 180 minus 90 minus theta. Now by the Pythagorean theorem we know that the length of this hypotenuse is simply well it's r squared plus l divided by 2 squared raised to the power of 1 half. So the length of this is given by this quantity. Now, what is the electric field due to the electric dipole at point A? So we have two point charges and that means there will be two electric fields at point A. The first electric field given by E1 is the electric field as a result of the negatively charged point charge. And the second electric field given by E2 is the electric field as a result of the positive point charge. So this points away and this points directly into point charge number one. Now let's begin by finding the sum of the electric fields that point along the x-axis. So notice this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis and because these two electric field vectors point uh, at an angle with respect to the x-axis we need to find the x components then the y components and then take the sum to find the net. So, notice that the angle of this is theta and the angle of this is also theta. So that means the sum of our electric field along the x-axis is equal to cosine of this angle theta multiplied by E1 plus cosine of the angle theta multiplied by E2. Now, let's move on to finding the sum along our y component. So, we have our sine of the angle angle theta multiplied by E2 minus sine of the angle theta multiplied by E1. So notice they point in the opposite directions and this will equal zero because as we'll see in just a moment E1 is equal to E2. So there is no net force or there is no net electric field along our y-axis. There is only an electric field along our x-axis. So that means the net electric field at point A is simply equal to the sum of the electric field along the x-axis. And this is equal to this quantity, cosine of the angle theta multiplied by E1 plus cosine of the angle theta multiplied by E2. Now, by Coulomb's law, because the distances are the same and because the charges are the same, that implies that E1 is equal to E2, which is equal to Q, the charge, divided by 4 pi times epsilon naught multiplied by this distance, which is given by this quantity. Now, we square that, and that's exactly why the 1 half disappears. Now, let's move on to the following step.
because E1 is equal to E2, we can combine these terms and we get the following result. Notice we have replaced E1 and E2 with simply E. So the net electric field at point A as a result of these two point charges, as a result of our electric dipole, is equal to 2 cosine theta multiplied by E. Now E is replaced with the following equation and we get the following result. Now let's look at the following triangle. We can replace our cosine theta in terms of the following. So in terms of our adjacent side divided by our hypotenuse side. So cosine of the angle theta is equal to adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So that gives us L divided by 2 divided by the following quantity. Now this 2 is simply brought to our denominator and we get the following result. Out. So now we take this equation and we replace cosine theta with this quantity and we get 2 multiplied by this multiplied by this. So let's combine the top, notice the 2's will cancel and we can also combine the following denominators because when we multiply we add the exponents. So, the net electric field at point A that lies on our perpendicular bisector with respect to our electric dipole is equal to L multiplied by Q divided by the following quantity, 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R squared plus L squared divided by 4 raised to the power of 3 divided by 2. Now, the quantity L multiplied by Q where L is this distance and Q is the quantity of charge is known as the electric dipole moment and it's given by lowercase p. So we can replace this product with simply p. So we see that the net electric field at point A as a result of our electric dipole is equal to the electric dipole moment p divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by r squared plus epsilon L squared divided by 4 raised to the power of 3 divided by 2. This is the electric field on the perpendicular bisector of the electric dipole.